Hey everybody, on my channel I have a review of the Trezor Safe 3 cold hardware wallet. One of the options presented to users during the setup of that wallet was the advanced Shamir backup. In that video, I skipped that option and created a standard BIP39 seed phrase wallet. But it got me thinking, what is the Shamir thing anyway? So I did some digging, and in today's video, I'm going to explain what the Shamir backup is, how it works, and finally, whether or not I would recommend this unique seed phrase backup system. So stick around to the end to find out. If that sounds good to you, let's dive in. So what is a Shamir backup? If you're from New York, it's putting cream cheese on a bagel. But if you're not from New York, Shamir Backup, also known as SLIP-39 or SLIP-39 Backup, offers a sophisticated approach to securing cryptocurrency seed phrases. Based on Addy Shamir's secret sharing scheme developed in 1979, this method applies advanced polynomial cryptography to protect sensitive information like wallet private keys or recovery seed phrases. The core concept involves splitting a secret into multiple parts, called shares, which appear as random sequences of 20 to 33 words drawn from a specialized 1,024-word SLIP39 or SLIP39 word list. What sets Shamir backup apart from the other backup systems is its flexibility and security. Users can create up to 16 different shares, each revealing nothing about the original seed phrase on its own. To recover the secret, a predefined number of these shares must be combined, allowing for customizable security thresholds. This approach enables distributed trust and robust backup strategies, particularly valuable for safeguarding high-value cryptocurrency holdings like yours. And for more complex setups, Shamir Backup even supports hierarchical grouping of shares, offering advanced users additional layers of security and organization. By leveraging this method, cryptocurrency owners can achieve a balance between security and recoverability, thereby mitigating the risks associated with traditional single point of failure backup systems. Think of it like this. Imagine you have a secret message you want to protect. You write it down on a piece of paper and tear it into a bunch of pieces, let's say five. Each piece of paper contains part of the message, but none of them make sense alone. To read the full message, you need to put a certain number of these pieces of paper back together. That is Shamir Backup. So how does Shamir Backup actually work? To generate a Shamir Backup, there are five main steps. Number one, you have to choose the number of groups of shares that are going to be involved in this backup. Now, this can get complicated really fast. So for most cases, I would recommend just one group of shares. Second, you choose the number of words in each share. A Shamir backup can be created with 20 or 33 word shares derived from the SLIP39 word list. You don't actually get to pick them. The computer does it for you, and please let it do so. But I would strongly suggest the 20-word option. Next, you choose the total number of shares you're going to have in your group. This can be anywhere from 1 to 16. And for most use cases, either 3 or 5 should suffice. And then next, you choose the threshold number of shares required to restore the secret. For example, in a 3 of 5 Shamir backup, three of the five shares would be required to restore the secret. Now that secret could be a phrase, it could be a seed phrase, it could be a password, or it could be a cryptocurrency wallet. For most personal applications, a two of three share setup or a three of five share setup is most common. And then the last step is simply creating the shares. Your hardware wallet or computer will generate these shares for you. Record, secure, and distribute them safely. Let's take a look at the Trezor setup screen and see what this is all about and what brought it to my attention in the first place. All right, here's the Trezor setup screen. I have my Trezor Save 3 and I factory reset it for this demo. I'm going to plug it into the computer and start the setup process. Here we go. Set up my Trezor, continue, start. It needs to check the firmware on the device. Looks good. Skip, continue, and now we're at the create new wallet site. So I press create new wallet. And this is where I have the option to create either a 12 word seed phrase, like a traditional BIP 39 seed phrase, 24 word seed phrase. Incidentally, the default selection is the 12 word backup. Then up top here, I have a single share backup, one 20 word backup, which is typically not 
recommended or suggested by any kind of Shamir setup, but for some reason they offer that. Now, in the software itself, you can upgrade that 20-word single-share setup to a multi-share setup anytime you want. The option that most people should or would choose if they're going to choose Shamir would be the multi-share backup option right here. And I'm not going to go through this because it takes forever. And I would, again, limit the number of shares to three or five because you're going to get either 60 or 100 words to record and secure safely. That's a lot of security, okay? So three or five, I wouldn't go beyond that number of shares. Anyway, you, you would choose one of these options and then move forward with the wallet set up just like pretty much normal. Okay, now let's take a look in an example of a two of three Shamir backup. Being a two of three backup, two shares are required to restore the wallet and three shares are created during the wallet setup. If you'll notice, the first few words of each of the shares are similar or the same to help identify that they belong to the same group of shares. Remember, in Shamir backup, multiple groups of shares can be created and then you have threshold numbers of groups Again, it gets really complicated. The important part is that no single share reveals any part of the underlying secret, or in this case, C phrase. Here's an example of the three shares on paper, so to speak. And if you'll notice here, the first four words are similar, while the first two are exactly the same. And then the fourth one is the same right here. And then this one starts with A, this one starts with B, this one starts with C. I'm assuming if share five or four and five were created, it would start with D and E. This is a, an example of three 20 word shares that I created with the Trezor actually. And obviously I'm not using them and I don't actually know what happens if you restore a wallet with these. So go for it. All right, moving on. Now, the one thing I did notice while I was setting up the demo Shamir wallet, which I'm not going to show you, it takes forever, in the Trezor Suite software is that the seed phrase, the 12-word BIP39 seed phrase, theoretically underlying the Shamir backup seed phrases or shares was never revealed to the user. So you go through the setup process and then you have access to this wallet and your shares are essentially your seed phrase, so to speak. So basically, the user can only use those shares with a compatible platform to restore a wallet if necessary. That made me really uncomfortable. So I did some digging. Let's talk about compatibility. Right now, the only wallets I found that make the Shamir backup option available to users during wallet setup are the Trezor Save 3, the Trezor Save 5, the Trezor Model T, and the Keystone Pro. The Ledger wallet uses a different Shamir secret sharing technique called Peterson Verifiable Secret Sharing inside their infamous Ledger Recover service. I would not recommend that. Now, I really don't like being limited to a few hardware options when I'm putting a significant amount of money into a cryptocurrency wallet. What if I lose the wallet? Then I have to use those particular platforms in order to restore the account and move the crypto out if I wanted to. So what would happen if you lost your Trezor and you were on a Shamir backup system? Would you lose your crypto? The answer is yes and no. Yes, if you don't get your hands on a new Trezor or Shamir compatible device, and no, if you're super smart like me. The hardware limitations, along with not knowing your BIP39 seed phrase, make me super uncomfortable. But after some more research, I found out that in a pinch, you can restore a Shamir backup to the Electrum hot wallet with the requisite number of 20 or 33 word shares. Well, I tried that and I did a screen recording and I'm gonna play it right now. Okay, so when you open the Electrum wallet to restore a Shamir backup to a new wallet, you have to create a wallet and then enter the shares, the 20 word shares in this case, the requisite number, and then the wallet pops up and you're good to go. So I'll walk you through the process on this Electrum wallet video. Okay, here we are at the opening screen when you open the Electrum wallet we're going to call this restore wallet it's going to be a standard wallet then we're going to say I already have a seed phrase and press next then you enter the seed phrase here but where's the Shamir oh options so it's a slip 39 seed phrase right so we're going to select that press ok I'm going to enter the 20 words it takes too long and I'll skip to that part in the video 
Okay, I've entered the shares, and it says one of two shares needed from the group Fiber Roster Academic. So it recognizes that there's a group, and I need two shares, or maybe two more shares. Okay, let's go ahead and add the next share, and I'm going to skip ahead again. All right, second share entered, detect existing accounts, native SegWit, and I will press next, set up a password for this account, and finish. And there it is. There's our restored account. This was a two of three Shamir backup. I put two shares in and I can go ahead and send crypto out if there was anything in here or receive crypto into this account. And that is how you restore an account to the Electrum wallet. At least the Electrum software wallet gives you another option to restore to if necessary, other than those other hardware platforms I mentioned. I feel a little better, but my biggest concern was that Users of the Shamir backup, at least on the Trezor, I'm assuming it's all platforms, are not privy to the theoretical underlying BIP39 seed phrase and therefore can't restore their account or their wallet to any old hardware wallet or software wallet. It really limits their options. So I went looking for a way to reverse engineer the BIP39 seed phrase of a wallet created with the Shamir backup system. If you have the requisite number of shares to restore a wallet, you should be able to use them to recover the associated seed phrase, right? Well, it turns out you can't do that. I initially thought that the Shamir backup was a, simply a backup of your seed phrase, but that's not how it works. The Shamir backup is generated using the entropy that is also used to create a traditional seed phrase. This same random number is input into the Shamir system to create these random shares, sort of upstream from the seed creation step. When restoring a wallet using the Shamir backup shares, they're used to recreate the entropy that was used to generate the underlying private key. The shares are not used to directly restore the seed phrase, or a BIP39 seed phrase. To test my hypothesis, I created a wallet using the Shamir backup system and then used those shares to restore the 128-bit hexadecimal number theoretically utilized to create the master private key of that wallet. And then I fed that entropy into a seed phrase generator and came up with a seed phrase associated with that 128-bit hexadecimal number. So I thought I had done it. I thought I had used the Shamir backup to restore a hexadecimal entropy number and then use that hexadecimal entropy number to create a seed phrase and a wallet. I thought they were the same thing. So I sent a little bit of Bitcoin to the one, the seed phrase wallet. I created the BIP39 seed phrase and it did not appear in the Shamir wallet. So they are completely different. Besides, all of their derived addresses and their XPUBs were completely different as well. So it looks like if you choose the Shamir backup option, you are absolutely limited to the platforms that support that technology if you want to restore a wallet at any point. All right, let's review. I found this neat table on Trezor.com's website, and we're going to review the advantages and disadvantages of the Shamir system versus the traditional BIP39 seed phrase backup. Okay, here's the table from the Trezor website, and we're looking at the features of the single seed BIP39 versus the Shamir backup seed phrase system. That's what they call it, at least. And word length for a single seed is 12, 18, or 24. For the Shamir backup, it says 20 or 33 words, but right now you can only create a wallet with multiple 20-word shares or a single 20-word share. You can restore wallets on the Trezor with 33-word shares, but you cannot create them right now. So you're restricted to the 20 right now. The number of shares you have for a single seed, of course, is 1. 1 to 16 for Shamir. You, the traditional seed phrase backup uses a BIP 39-word list, and the Shamir backup uses a slip 39-word list. Also, the threshold for recovery is all words, one of one. And for the Shamir backup, you can specify how many shares are required to restore the secret or the wallet. Again, two of three or three of five are the most common. You can distribute the uh, shares among trusted parties or locations, which is a really neat way to work with some inheritance capabilities of the Shamir system. You can also distribute your seed phrase if you want. Mm. 
not the best idea. And then as far as redundancy, if you lose your seed phrase, everything's gone. If you lose one of the shares, you're still good. So it does offer some redundancy and susceptibility to loss or theft is very high with the single seed phrase and loss is tolerable up to the threshold with the Shamir system. In summary, the benefits of the Shamir system are increased security, increased redundancy. You have inheritance planning options available that you don't have with the single seed phrase. There's no single point of failure and you can separate your shares geographically and create a decentralized storage system. Some drawbacks to consider of the Shamir system are its complexity. You need to safe keep more than one share. So that's an issue that you might have to deal with a little more advanced safekeeping systems. There's very limited hardware wallet compatibility with the Shamir backup. There's significant lack of adoption. It doesn't seem like other hardware wallets are instituting the Shamir system and you're not given a traditional seed phrase during setup. In conclusion, would I recommend the Shamir backup system? For me, not knowing your BIP39 seed phrase and the platform restrictions associated with the Shamir backup make it difficult for me to recommend this system right now. This system does offer some extra layers of security and redundancy for your cryptocurrency wallet backup, but it's important to understand the drawbacks before using it. So do your own research, make sure you understand what you're getting into before you put your life savings into a cryptocurrency wallet backed up with the Shamir backup system. Let me know what you think of the Shamir backup system in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.